Hello, and welcome to Why with Seth and Parker. My name is Parker. I'm Seth. And this is the weekly show where we give you... when we're, we're <laughs> what, are we, what are we doing, Parker? I already messed up. Wow. <laughs> this is a new record. Wow. Messing yeah, up like, this what, early. Five I, seconds in? Yeah. This is the weekly show where we dissect Billy Joel music, give stupid answers, stupid questions, and give ourselves over to absolute pleasure. Wow, that sounds familiar. It does sound familiar. What did we do this weekend, Seth? Parker, we went to Rocky Horror not just once, but twice. Man, it's like we're actual friends outside this right? show. Man, shocker. So, like we just do witty banter in the studio every Sunday. I mean, we have to have that basis to do it, so... Unfortunately. So how did you like the Rocky Horror Show and the Rocky Horror Picture Show? I was a very, very... Um, what's the word? How do you say it in English? Um, a, a fan. I enjoyed it very much, actually. Um, you know, each of them had their own special uniqueness. Like the the picture show, the movie was phenomenal because of the pre-show and all the interactions and everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then you get into the <clears throat> um, the the theater performance that K State Theater Department's putting on. Uh, yeah, when are they putting that on? Just so we can uh, advertise them in their lovely show. I don't know. They're, They're putting it on this Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at seven thirty. Except for on Saturday, it's two thirty and. 10:30. So if you want to see the phenomenal produ- production at Kansas State, I suggest you go online to ksu.edu/theater and check those out. Is it theater or thre- theatre? Theater. We speak English here, well, Seth. like no, but with the R E or the E R? E R. Okay. Anyways, um was but it, can I finish my sentence? Sure. Okay. So I wanted to like talk about why I thought that the um the theater production was so good. And let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, two words. Eye candy. Oh Lord. Like, did you look at some of the, the, the folks up on stage? I did. Um there were some delightful young people that I actually knew some of them, thank you oh, very much. Well, so I knew some let's of them not too. objectify the people we I'm not know. objecting, I'm just telling I'm like complimenting on how well they look. Like they are I appreciate their beauty. Mm-hmm. I, I bet you do. I can't appreciate beauty. I, I don't know, it's your life. But I mean, there's no mirrors in the studio, so I'm. I'm gonna have to right guess now. that none of them are listening to this because they do have a performance right they're, now. Yeah, they're going on right now, but, but maybe they'll case, listen to us on SoundCloud. Maybe, but in case you are listening to us on SoundCloud, I have to say, hey, if you're listening to this person who played Columbia, give me a call. Hey, what's where? She, where can she call you at? You can call me at KSDB <laughs> at uh, eight o'clock on Sundays <laughs> at seven eight five five three two. 0919. So if you feel like calling in, I wouldn't say no. Can I give a shout out to Frankenfurter and a uh, couple of the uh, the Phantoms? No, I called dibs on everyone in no. that production. Oh, and Rocky. No, peace straight. Oh, dang. That's a. Uh, mm. It's always a shame when people are straight. Right. Oh, well, well. They'll get over it eventually. So, Seth, would you like to tell us our lovely story about what we did after the theater production? After the theater production? Yes. Oh, man. That was a good time. We. Um, well, Parker and I were, we were both in heels and we had two <laughs> very skimpy outfits as well. Oh yeah, definitely. We look good. Um, but we were walking downhill. So that was the first bad idea. Um, first bad idea was walking. We should have just cartwheeled right? or rolled. Yeah. I, I log roll down the hill. Yep. Good times. But then we, uh, went on an adventure to Varsity Donuts. Mm, Varsity delicious. Donuts. Not mm. a sponsor. Varsity Donuts. Anyways, um, and so we hung out at Varsity's, we met rando strangers, we took rando pictures, and had an, I think, all-around good time. Yeah, you don't want to tell us about the cast member who came up to us? Oh, no, oh yeah, no, the cast member, um, he played the uh, criminologist, criminologist, that's the word, and he came up and uh, told us how much he loved our outfits and loved Parker's comments, and he was an all-around pretty sweet guy. We took a selfie video with him. He, well, he, he did. He it's did probably on, on someone's Snapchat somewhere, 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 something, something. But it was a good time, and I got a corn dog, and you got bacon and a box of donuts. Mm, bacon, a vegan's worst nightmare. <laughs> we did have a vegan with us. Now he will be gone. Scott Pilgrim reference. Always a Scott Pilgrim right? reference. So Seth, so, anything else you wanted to tell the lovely people about our lovely weekend? Um, you or know, are you ready for a? phenomenal Billy Joel I think song. I just want to reiterate how great I think Rocky Horror is and how much I love some of the music that they have on there and just 
it's an all around good time. And I think that if you have never been to Rocky, you should definitely go. Be prepared for a little bit of vulgarity and a little bit of offensive material. Yeah. Believe it or not, you can be offensive at these things. Really? Seth became offended halfway through the I, I live became show. offended with a couple of things you said, but we're because not going to worry about that. Because I am a master of witty comments. Yes, you are. But speaking of rock, um, we are going to listen to a lovely Billy Joel song that's a little more rockish than his other work. It's called... It's, it's hey, still did you rock- comment on Rocky Horror at all, or did you just leave that all to me? That was mainly all you, but mm. I just know how you love to talk. I enjoyed it. I also really enjoyed being objectified for once in my life. I, I have a delightful, delightful buttocks, and I very, I have very little time to like actually show it off because I'm usually wearing loose fitting clothing. Yeah, and you need to be a professional and all that jazz. Yeah, I don't like being a professional, but I do it just for me. You couple times, ti- couple times a year, you get to pull out the gold underwear. Yep, and it's always lovely. Or just like the other underwear at the drag show. Oh, that, no, because those were rainbow, right? Rainbow. Yep. Rainbow. Very but good. on to Billy Joel, the man, the myth, the legend, the reason for the season. The dead one, right? No, he's not dead. Come on. I don't need to tell this to you every single week. I I'm the one with bad memory around here. Oh, honey, my memory is shot. Well, maybe you should take less shots. Shots, 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 shots. I promise I am sober. But this is also like from the middle of Billy Joel's career like we did last week. Um, and this is a song called It's Still Rock and Roll to Me. It's basically about how people were saying that punk is too out there to be rock, that pop is too out there to be rock, and that rock has that, you know, at the s- core, like very rebellious and fast paced attitude that a lot of people don't get. Mm-hmm. Rock is not about exclusion, and this song is about including all the outcoves of rock. So, mm-hmm. are you ready to listen to this? I think so. Let me make sure that the computer is turned on. So, once again, this is Billy Joel. It's still rock and roll to me. Roll the clip, please. And we're back. Wow, that was fast. I almost didn't have time to go to the bathroom. So, uh, okay, I know that's a joke, but you realize that the point of this podcast, I mean radio show, I mean whatever we call them. This is a just a cluster. Yes, is to dissect Billy Joel music. Yes, and that is why we are here for this first portion of the the section, the the, the, the show. show. Yeah. yeah. So, what did you think? I that was one of the shortest Billy Joel songs we've listened to thus far. Believe it or not, not all, every single song he has put out is a seven minute opus. Wow, but some of them are, and some that's not a bad thing. It's not. He's a wonderful, wonderful man, and one day he will catch up on this radio show. And he will just appreciate me as much as Maybe I appreciate him. Maybe we can have him as him. guest host? Maybe, before the, he dies. Which? He is literally 60. Oh, that's not too old. Yeah. he's got, He's probably got a few good years left. I mean, he uh-huh. outlasted your mom. Kevin's like 60. Ah, uh, speaking of speaking which. Speaking of which, <laughs> do you want to make the announcement? Yes, our lovely and good gay uncle Kevin will be coming on to our show next week to answer your stupid questions about really anything that doesn't involve a curse word (laughs) that's the only that's the only stipulation i can think of i mean you're not wrong but um please do send in your questions to sethandparker at gmail.com that's s-e-t-h-a-n-d-p-a-r-k-e-r at g-m-a-i-l dot c-o-m i really should have made a big deal about him spelling it the first time because now I spell it just now to bother you, spell you. It just to bother me. Hey, you know, you do what you got to do. Okay. Are you ready for our first question, Seth? We didn't even dissect the song, Parker. You're the one who dis- <laughs> You just went things. on a complaint r- tangent about this whole important part of our show when I think the real important part is them getting to listen to me talk. And okay, then you started then talking. Why don't you start talking about how amazing this song was? Please dissect it for me. <clears throat> well, ladies and gentlemen, um, part of the first line um, says you can't dress trashy till you spend a lot of money. And that actually made me think of, um, I can't say her n- full name, but Alaska Thunder, um, a song. Of course it does. Drag queen uh, that she sings about how it takes a lot of money to look this cheap. Uh, and I just, that really resonated with me. Do not compare Billy Joel to the trashy people who you listen to. I, I have listen. very refined taste. Parker, your taste is, is old, as old as your soul. If it's old and I still like it, that means it's stayed around for 30 some odd years. I don't think anyone will be talking about Alaska in 30 years. I think, I think Alaska is very worth being talked about. I don't think someone will dedicate an entire section of a radio show I to would. Alaska. I would. 
Oh, can we do that sometime? 30 years from now, if we're still alive. If we're, Parker, do you like expect us to die within the next 30 years? I don't know. I mean, there's many ways I could die. The rapture? And you could die. Yeah. I really... There's the rapture, there's suicide, there's just dying of AIDS or whatever. I mean, there are so many things that we could both die Wild from. Wild animal attacks. Yeah. You know, there's also that I one. could die from a bear attack and you can die from just a bear. Yeah. Well, also, let's just consider, um, you know the upcoming election you know it could lead to the hunger games irl hey so any other tips on uh, billy joel's not really i just wanted to give you a hard time well it was a wonderful song and i applaud you mr joel retweet are you ready for our first question Seth? let's hear it parker and now you're the one who says it. i don't have it in front of me at the moment oh okay um so the first question we are supposed to ask is how do you decrease crying when cutting onions I don't actually cry when I'm cutting onions, do you? Um, my eyes get watery, and I think that the um, <clears throat> the way you need to avoid that... Ooh, 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 ooh. ooh. Don't have emotional attachments to yeah. vegetables. Don't develop a personal relationship yeah. with that onion. If you have a personal relationship with it, throw it away. Go get its second cousin, and uh, I can't, I almost said something I and couldn't. And just, just murder <laughs> the heck out of it. Cut it up. Yep, kill, just, kill just it. Just dice that bee. Slay queen. So is that like your actual, or is that just my smart but talks comment? Do you have an actual way to decrease crying while cutting onions? No, I was going to say don't be emotionally attached and that oh, would help. But then, then I jumped on it first. I think that like there's an Parker, actual. I think you usually jump on it first. Yeah, because you're, you're the dirty. one who gets the sloppy seconds around you're here. Just, you're just a dirty person. But I think that you can chew like bubble gum or something that to reduce it or something oh, like that. Oh, really? Has that been proven? I don't know. Let's just ask science. Science? Let's just go into our science corner. Welcome to the Seven Parker Science Corner. We're going to test this right in the studio. Here I have an onion and some peppermint gum. Sorry I couldn't find bubble gum. I'm kind of cheap as well, so I just went to the vending machine and popped 50 cents in the... And got the little cheapo packets yeah, of gum. Yeah, it's, it's juicy fruit. That's not peppermint. Um, It's uh, spearmint. Spearmint. Pe- peppermint. Yeah, very good. We're not sponsored by anything, might I add, because we're not allowed to. Well, even then, I'm not sure that any company would want to sponsor us. Basically. But back to the science corner. Parker, would you like would... to chew the gum while I cut the onion? Yeah, sure. Let's see. Let's Ready? see how this goes. Are we doing this? Yes. Okay. So you any... chew the gum. And I'll cut the onion. <laughs> it's so emotional. I had a family. What happened? Onions don't have families. Onions are like ogres. No, no one cares about them. I had a family and you killed it. So, um, a conclusion of the South and Parker Science Corner <laughs> is that... <laughs> why are you crying doing the Science Corner theme? <laughs> don't get emotionally attached to the Science Corner theme. <laughs> It's wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. And you know what else is wrong? That the myth uh, that chewing gum while chopping onions will make you not cry. So there we go. We busted this. Okay. Wow. That Uh, was... That was thoroughly informative. That was good. That was good. I actually really enjoyed that for once. I think our listeners did too. Hopefully you've learned something today. You know, I'm really excited if this goes on next semester. I think we should like have a video camera and do like a live film. We might do that for our December special show. Ooh, that could be fun. Or a late November special show. I mean, you know, you do what you got to do. Are you ready for our second question? Yeah. You want me to ask it or are you still? No. Did you ever we, actually, we, did, we take turns. B- did you actually pull it up? Yes. Oh, see, you told me you didn't have it's it. It's on Google Docs. I, I just love Google. This is a PSA you, for Google. Your future overlords. Mm, Google. Google. What is your favorite accessory? In addition, who is your favorite accessory to crime if you're supposedly committed a crime? This comes from, of course, the incorrigible Lynette Wolf. What 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 she mean by um, accessory? Accessories like, like a headband, wear? like a ring, Ooh. like a watch, like a nose. So those ring. accessories. Yeah, those accessories. And then an accessory to a crime is like. Well, I know that that's a. Yeah, I know that. Yeah, he knows more about crime than fashion because his I life is have more. No of a, fashion sense whatsoever. Yeah. Yep, all he knows about fashion is fashion crimes. Mm-hmm. Retweet. But so, what's your favorite accessory, Seth? I really like my septum ring. Septum's the one in the nose, right? Yeah, not the nostril, uh, but it's the one that I. I was thinking the up. other S word. I don't think I'm allowed to say that on. The, don't say the other S word. I, darn it! I've been foiled from my FCC plan. I can't spell scrotum. 
man. Well, you just said it, so let's hope we don't get fined. Let's hope so. Um. Anyways, continuing on. Um. I think my uh, partner in crime, actually, Parker, I would, I would take you as my partner in crime if we were to commit a murder together. Oh, murder! Wow, we're just going to the straight to the top. Yeah, because you don't have emotions, and I have the brains, so you could commit it, and I would like plan it. You think I'm just going to follow your directions? I, I'm I, the you, least likely you, person to follow your hair brain schemes. You would like. I would. You would like tweak them, but I think that it, I could give you a skeletal outline, and you'd be like, "Oh, okay." I thought the goal was to get a skeletal outline. I mean that too. I mean, we could just. I, I I'll murder someone by myself. Who says that I haven't? I mean, I'm not gonna say anything. But if you want to find the body, you can go to 1415 Anderson Avenue. I don't know what that is, but I assume that it's something important. It's an academic institution. Is it Bluemont? No. Okay, then I don't. Oh, is it MCC? Yeah. Of course it's MCC. <laughs> the best place to find a body. That's been. This has been a PSA for Manhattan Christian College. I don't have anything else to say about Manhattan Christian College. You don't have to. All you need to do is reciprocate the question to me. Can I just go, ugh? Yes, thank you for asking. My favorite accessory, fashion-wise. Oh, we're going back to accessories. Because I haven't answered the question yet. Believe it or not, this is not just why with Seth. There is a Parker component to this. My favorite accessory is this wonderful 18-foot-long scarf that I commissioned my friend Lynette Wolf to make. Ironically, the person who asked this question. And my favorite accessory to crime is probably my own guilty conscience, because I can only trust myself when committing heinous acts. That's hmm. that's why me, it's only me and Jill in the bedroom. Yeah, definitely. I can see that. Please, I'll join you one of these days. Please do not imagine me and Jill alone. I, I'm, I mean, I can't. I'm, please stop. Mm. This is my ima- okay. Oh okay. man, this oh. is uncomfortable for this me. This is this is very comfortable for me. Let's just hope our producer doesn't walk in right now. He's in an important meeting. Thank you, James, for, for again not- letting this go on the air every <laughs> single week. Shout out to James. This is a PSA for James. We've James- already done one for him. Let's expand our PSA, Seth. This is a PSA for Parker Heinze. He me. might be a dweeb and he might be kind of a jerk, but he is a good friend. Parker Heinze. Delicious. Mm. Seth likes to imagine me and Jill alone. I mean, who doesn't? I, well, I'd, I'd imagine a lot of people. Can I imagine not, you go at it? Mm. I, I have not gotten a call from uh, the person who played Columbia yet, so there's that. She was a really nice looking lady. Seth, would you like to ask her a third question of the day? Yeah, I, I can do that. Um, let's see. I understand Harvey Lee Oswald killed Lincoln because he was sleeping with his wife. But why did JWB kill JFK? I heard it was because Marilyn Monroe was Booth's girlfriend at the time, and JFK knocked her up. I also think it's really weird that there was no seating at the amphitheater where JFK was shot. And I always heard he was shot on a balcony, but he was in his car driving through the op- theater in what movie were they showing at the theater that day i can't find it anywhere that was i think uh, the, oh that doesn't sound like a good question where did it come from um it doesn't it's just it, i assume yahoo answers it's, because it's i'm not the one on who here. curates this it's really not on here it's like i can tell you there's a whole lot wrong with this and yeah i think they mixed up lincoln's assassination with jfk's yeah, i don't know much about i don't know history. how marilyn monroe got mixed in there either because he's she was supposedly sleeping with jfk oh oh see i didn't i didn't know that um but really? also yeah also so what movie do you think jfk would go see oh, independence day i don't think that was out yet oh Ooh, maybe he saw the stephen king hulu series 11 16 65 maybe or whatever they saw, maybe he saw like stranger things mm. on netflix or maybe Citizen i'll bet Kane. you i'll bet you jfk was into netflix and chill oh with marilyn monroe yeah and like his wife on the side why would the wife be the side chick i think marilyn monroe would be the side chick i mean who knows they might have had a weird polyamorous relationship that worked out differently than most others uh democrats and their polyamory 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 that's the word polyams <clears throat> Ooh. Polygons. Poly- polyglots speak multiple languages. Um, I believe you, but I don't know what you just said. Anyways, Parker, I think, do you, should we take a break now? Um, I don't think so. We haven't made it halfway through. Oh, bummer. 
I mean, I have a couple songs that I put in here just for you, so. Do you mind if we ask one more question? Yeah, let's do one more. Break? Do you want to ask? Yes, this comes from our good friend Megan Goins. Mm, quote, unquote. On the Megan Goins part, our good friend. Yes. <laughs> well, she asked, what is the best genre of music and why? What is the best genre of music Seth, and why? would you like to answer this? Um, There's a couple of different answers I have. I know Megan loves indie stuff and she loves the chain smokers and she loves halsey so she likes that alternative stuff um but she hates country and i really like country i think country's cool in its own special what's way what's your favorite country song then uh i don't have one do you have a favorite country singer um i i don't know i grew up listening to a lot of toby keith and then um some alan jackson was mixed in there and then taylor swift kind of went through her country phase which i thought was was nice and rascal flats is good i I don't know i'm basic so yes we know you're gonna get basic answers but then i also like the modern pop music and then religious music is also super good and so i don't know i'm not super picky and then i also throw some eminem in there Mm, what about you well i'm a big fan of classic rock of course that's the classical uh queen and beatles and the eagles but i'm also a big fan of um orchestrated music so the classical stuff beethoven bach um and then my final one which might be a surprise is comedy music Mm. so stuff like childish gambino and bo burnham i like childish gambino yes i know but speaking of music what music are you going to play for me, Seth? You know, I think in honor of this weekend, we should um, celebrate with some... Booze? Um, well, I mean, that goes without saying. Um, but maybe just a little bit of Rocky Horror. Ooh, which one? There's just so many great songs. I think... Every f- time I listen to that soundtrack, I find a, a new favorite. Yep, I get. I totally get you. And so I think I'm going to go ahead and play Sweet Transvestite for the first one. Sure, why not? That, that's a classic, right? It's a classic. So we will be back momentarily. Oh, joy. That was fun. It was. You twas, know. Twas, twas. Twas, twas, twas. Thrice. Thrice. Thrice is a word, I think. Sometimes. Thrice is nice. Thrice the, I don't know. Yeah. What were you going to say? I, I was going to say that, like, at the end of that, I started really getting into the song, so I turned on the mics so we could start singing, kind of, but... Didn't quite work. Yeah. Maybe for next break. I think the next break would be really good, because this show is now going to, um, in after a few questions, turn into um, crappy karaoke with Seth and Parker. Wow, I'm always looking forward to that. <laughs> but before we do that, crappy karaoke, maybe that's the third section of next week's show with Kevin. I would love to have Kevin. Or maybe Crappy Karaoke is giving ourselves sober to absolute pleasure. But if us singing is absolute pleasure, I don't want to know what heaven's like. Mm, I mean, I'll mm, take me to heaven, Parker. So, Seth, would you like to continue on the second part of our show? Yeah. Giving stupid answers to stupid questions? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, this question, it's, do you shop at a farmer's market and what is your best find there? Do you shop at Parker Parker's Market? Parker's Market. Um, farmers I mean, Markets. I get, okay. Oh, we're talking about. We are talking about farmers markets yes. and not Parker's I Market. I derped out for a second. Only for a second. My entire life. Yeah. There you go. Um. Every once in a while, I'll go to a farmers market. Manhattan has a pretty nice one on Saturday mornings. Um. And okay. I, first off, mornings. Uh, there's problem number one. Well, like it goes until like one in the afternoon. Hell yeah. Anyways, um, and there's a nice little bakery stand called Kim's Prairie Kitchen that I go to and. Uh, I know her personally, so she gives me sweets, and I appreciate it a lot. Okay. So that's, yeah, sometimes I go there, and sweets are usually my best finds. Really? Yep. I've only gone to one um, farmer's market, and that was down uh, the Riverwalk in KC. That was with our good friend and producer, Megan Goins. And I found some awesome cherry limeades and library what? books. What? Yeah, At a some, farm? What? Yes. It's just one of those amazing, like, you could see jugglers, you can see, like, weirdly shaped squashes and what? bread. Mmm, bread. Delicious, delicious bread. But it was a pretty good experience, but I've never been there since. But cherry limeades and books. Cherry limeades and books. I'm always down for a good cherry limeade. Didn't we talk about this last week? Yes. Okay, well, we're not going to digress again. Nope. But any other final words on farmer's markets? Farmer's market. Shop local. Sure, whatever you say. Yes, mommy.
Are you ready for our next question? Yeah, go ahead, Parker. Let's hear it. This one comes from Yahoo Answers once again. But before we get into it, Seth, would you like to tell people again where they can send questions? Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have a question you would like us to discuss and or answer or something you'd like us to do that does not include nudity, you uh, can We can do nudity. FTC doesn't say anything against it. Oh, yeah. So if you have something you want us to do that does include nudity, you can send those requests to sethandparker at gmail.com. S-E-T-H-A-N-D-P-A-R-K-E-R at G-M-A-I-L dot C-O-M. Speaking of being scantily clad, this question that comes from Yahoo Answers asks, I'm going to a concert in L.A. during the summer, and I honestly don't know what to wear. It's a rock concert, so I want to dress accordingly, but I can't wear black during the summer. If I wear shorts, however, everyone's going to think I'm trying to show skin for the singers. I don't want to be mistaken for a groupie. What do I do? Girl, you always show skin. It doesn't matter if you're going to be mistaken for a groupie. You just show skin because someone, somewhere... Well, okay, never mind. That was going to come out wrong. What if she's like if 12 years old? Okay, then yeah, don't don't show skin. But if like you are into that and you want to show... Not into the 12-year-old thing, but if you're like <laughs> into showing skin, um, you know, go ahead and do you because, you know, no one has the right to tell you you can't. Um, but also make sure that you bring around a baseball bat so you can tell the, the, the people who might gawk at you what's up and smack them around if they decide to get a little too handsy. I feel like that's assault with a weapon. Um, not if they come at her first. Mm, I still think that might be an inappropriate response at some times. But I'm, I'm bringing to... a bat, so get over it. Well, no one's going to gawk at you. You're an ugly person. No, I get gawked at, Regs. I'm sure you do, dear. Aw, you call me dear. That's the most affectionate you've been all month. Yep, and it's gone. But I would say to this wonderful person who is trying to dress appropriately for this concert, black is not an automatic no-no for the summertime. Like black tank tops work um, or something like that. But I'm going to say, again, don't let other people's perceptions of you get in the way of your comfort. Um, So you dress black if you want to. You show a little skin if you're the appropriate age if you want to. But... There's nothing wrong with groupies. I I feel like the underlying question here is why you have something against groupies. Groupies are wonderful people who help the rock world go round. That you shouldn't really judge people who follow around a band that they truly love. Maybe you're just a poser, huh? You ever think of that? I know. I doubt they thought of that. No, I about I bet they didn't. There's nothing wrong with groupies or roadies or whatever. So you do you, and don't judge other people for being a groupie and showing skin for singers. Like, when I went to the Billy Joel concert, I showed a hell of a lot of skin. You know, hey, that's okay, Parker. Uh, you also showed a hell of a lot of skin this weekend. At Rocky Horror. And I was like, Show. dang. Running Can at, I take that one home with me? Running at Chapman Theater this Thursday through Sunday. Get your tickets now. com slash theater, the right one. Any other things you want to add, Seth? Um, I don't. I don't have anything else to add. I, would you like me to move on to the next question, Parker? Sure. Why not? Okay. So our next question um, is, whoa, I don't want to ask this one. Why not? I. I, I mean, it involves thinking. So, I'm, I, I'm believe not, it or not, we do s- some occasional thinking on this show. I mean, we can talk. It's the question is top favorite. F- top five favorite female names starting with the letter M. Okay. This sounds Oops. like a tough one, so we're going to try to like maybe do one and one. No? Uh, you you want to do that? Like I come up with an M name, you come up with an M name. I'll Because I, I, I can't think of probably five M names, so we'll just, just do five y- M five names. Total. Not the best. Um, okay. I like the name. Um, there's a girl in my Spanish class who goes by the nickname. It's Mika. Yeah. It's it's just kind of a fun one, so I'm going to say Mika's interesting and fun. How about um Margie? Margie. Um That's that's my aunt's name or Mallory. That's the name from Archer. So, so we're at 3. Yeah. Uh, um I like the name Meredith. That's a good one. That's a good one. And I can't believe we saved this one for last. But um I'm going to have to go with Mark. Mark. Wait, that's not a woman's name. Oh. Well, it can be. Ah, that's my dad's name, fun fact. Oh, right Mark. Mm, okay, see, I learned something new every day. Um, how about Motorboat? Motorboat, that's that that seems like a hipster action. name. <laughs> it can also be a name. How about Mary? Mary, that's Mary, a good that's one. Mary, that's a sweet, like, old lady name. That's like classy. Margie. Margie, Mary, Meredith. Meredith. 
Merida. I already said Meredith. Um, or Mallory. Mallory's a good one. Mika. I'm still like really into Mika. I'm going with Mallory. That's the best M name. Yeah, Mallory's a good fit. I like it a lot. Are you ready for another question? Yeah, Parker. Why don't you go ahead and ask? Um, but before we get to this, um, I'm just going to um, say that we are two men who really are not qualified to give this advice, but we're going to try anyways. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. Is it polite to let a girl know when her bra strap is showing? I think for me, that one depends on the outfit because if it looks like it's showing out of an outfit where it's supposed to be hidden, maybe saying, hey, your bra strap's showing is a polite thing to do. Um, But if it's like she obviously knows that it's showing because she's wearing like spaghetti straps or something, you probably shouldn't say anything. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. But like what if it's like through a backless dress? Like aren't there dresses that you're not supposed to wear bras with? I, I think that they make strapless bras for those dresses. How does that work? It just goes around your chest and holds everything in place. Like with duct tape? No, no, no. It's just tight. But where's like the support system? Like if it's the just support across system the is front, around your it's around your chest. So it's like a suction. Like, kind like where does it like connect to the rest of your body besides on the breasts? It, it's tight enough around your chest and your breasts that it holds everything in place. Like a rubber band? Yeah, exactly like a rubber band. I still don't think I understand that concept, but I'm going to have to say that it will be polite if you say it in a polite way. So if you say, pardon me, miss, but your bra strap is showing, um, that's a little nicer than, hey, girl, your bra's showing. Yeah, it's like how you say... Or hey, bra, bra, your bra, 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 bra. It's like, it's how you say it is just as important as what you say. Exactly. Very good. So as long as you say it with respect and in the intent to inform as opposed to shame or embarrass, I feel like you're doing a good job. But um, are you ready for another music break, Seth? Yeah, let's go ahead and do this. So this is going to be the crappy, like, a little bit of karaoke, so y'all might hear some Seth and Parker noises coming from the room and not the, like, not good, the good noises. Kind. I'm glad we arrived at the same conclusion. So it's not going to be the best thing in the world, but it's still going to be a lot of fun, I think. So what song are we playing, It's going to be, Touch it, touch it, touch it, touch me! If that's any indicator on what this segment's going to be like, <laughs> I, I pity all of you. Oh, man. They're, I really this is to, when we need the camera in the studio. It really is. You think, you think you're ready for this, Parker? I was born ready for this. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. Are you ready for this? Yeah. Yeah, it's got to load. Oh, good. Yeah, you got to We load. know how we, we love to load. Mm-hmm. Wow, that was an interesting experience, to say the least. Why don't we do that more often? We might in the near future. There's only one way to find out. Tune in next week at ksdb.org. FM. There's an FM there. I think it's calm. Okay. SoundCloud. Yeah. Dot com slash with Seth and Parker. There you go, Parker. That's good enough. That was a good advertisement. You know where we're at. Very fulfilling. If you listen to this now, just be that same place next week. Yeah, and same radio station, same time. Same SoundCloud, same YouTube, whatever. Whatever floats your boat, different strokes for different folks. Something like that. Whatever gets you, gets you. Sometimes it's Jill. Oh, Lord. For every time it's for every time for Parker, it's Jill. Mm-hmm. Lovely, delicious Jill. Mm. Uh, this has been a PSA for my right hand. Sometimes I call her Jill. Very good. Um, I think we're going to go ahead and move on to the next question, Parker. Are you sure we don't want to talk about my hand? I mean, I'll talk about your hand. What Please, do, let's not. What, what do uh, you... That was sarcasm. We could talk about what you use and... I use mommy and daddy issues. Oh, okay. Yeah, you have a lot of those. Yep. And grandma and granddad issues. You just have a lot of issues in your family. And just... Man, there's a, there's enough issues in the Heinze family. We could have our own magazine. Oh, yeah. You get it? Because magazines have issues. Yeah. You get it? Yeah, I get it, Parker. I think it's lame, but I get it. Hey, can you hand me my pen? I mean, I could, but why would I, I want, want to? to? Do we have the rights to that song? I don't think we have the rights to any song. I've just been coasting this far. Ah. Uh, we all know this, though. Um, Seth, are you actually ready for our next question, or are we going to continue talking about my issues in hand? Um, I mean, I like talking about your issues. How about the issues at hand? Ooh. Ooh, Seth. Can we talk about my issues? Sure. Um, have you voted yet? I have. Oh, congratulations. Yeah. I, have I, you? Yes, I have. I did my absentee ballot. Okay, yeah, because you're still out of county registered. Yep. 
Okay. Uh, this is also maybe a friendly reminder for our listeners that uh, voting is coming up. But if you want to avoid the lines on November 8th, here on campus we have um, voting going at on the at union. the union on uh, various times. Um, so you should definitely stop by if you get the chance. And that makes your life a lot easier so you don't have to worry about Tuesday, November 8th. Yes, this has been an actual PSA for early voting. Early voting, please do it if you want to. Regular voting, please do it. Please. Yes, especially with this uh, presidential election. It's very important. I'd say focus on more local issues. Um, Well, I mean, I think that the national voting is probably... Could really get us in trouble. Uh, Whatever. Anyways, do you want to ask our next question or should I? Sure. Um, This question comes from Yahoo Answers and it asks... Why can't we use plastic materials to make sharp knife equivalent to steel knives? So what? yet, why don't we make plastic knives like as durable as regular knives? Do we have plastic that that's that's that durable? I mean, yeah, I mean like we have binders made out of plastic, we have pipes made out of plastic. Plastic is used for a lot of things nowadays. Okay. That's fair. But I believe that it'd be much more expensive to make plastic knives if they were as durable as Mm -hmm. their metal counterparts, therefore negating the reason why you'd want plastic knives. Yeah, you want it to be like a fairly cost-effective endeavor. (laughs) Endeavor. Mm -hmm. I barely know her. Well, I'm thinking... Val Heinze once famously said that. One of the many issues... That you have with your family? Yep. Man, your family is fun. Such Parker, can I do my dissertation people. on your family dysfunction? Um, I thought you'd want to do it on your erectile dysfunction. I mean, uh, if I'm studying you and your family, I'll have plenty of that. Um, contrary to popular belief, most Heinzies are still here because of the lack of <laughs> erectile dysfunction. Um, Whereas your family tree decided to stop a little farther up. No, my family tree is pretty. pretty I mean, you're the last man in the Dills line. No, there's definitely more of us. And I was poorly informed. Yeah, I have I have a pretty good sized family tree. Thank you, Parker, for being wrong on. So whenever you go to family reunions, do you uh, come early? I don't come at all. Hopefully not. Yeah, like I mean, you're from Southeast Kansas, not not Southeast Arkansas. Oh, (laughs) at least you're not from Utah. Such a terrible state. Man, like, really, though? Have you come up with anything good from Utah yet? Um, potatoes? No, that's Idaho. Potato, potato, Utah, Idaho. They're basically the same, right? Yeah, basically. On my radar, they are. But do you have any answers to this wonderful question? I really don't. I don't even know why you put this question on here. Because I try to curate stupid questions. Give us stupid answers. Do why don't you have amazing plastic knives? Because, you know, capitalism really messes with our system and we are cheap, so we produce steel instead of um, plastic. And, you know, sometimes we try to be environmentally friendly when in reality it's all facade by the government saying blah, 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 something about a conspiracy theory and how blah, 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 we are all horrible people because we don't recycle, but then the government doesn't allow us to recycle because capitalism and because white people. Uh, white people are the worst. Right? This has been a PSA for white people. Don't be one. <laughs> wow. Are we shaming people based on their race now? <laughs> Only white people, Parker. Only oh. white people. Okay. I think white people are pretty great. Especially those Italians. Oh, Italians are the worst. You're the worst. No, Germans are the worst. <laughs> I was just going to say. <laughs> but I beat you to it. Yeah. Like I do most things. Like your Saturday nights? Yeah. Beat it, beat it, beat it, beat it. That was by Michael Jackson, right? Yeah. I remember we played some of his music last week. Yeah. Because this is Thriller. Please do not sing. Our karaoke thing was much, much better. Mm, We could do more karaoke. We could, but let's let's not. Carly Rae Jepsen. I threw a (laughs) a wish in the well. No print me preguntes cual fue. Why? Why what? With Seth and Parker. Exactly. Uh, why do you keep on speaking Spanish? Why do we keep on having this show? Because we have yet to be fined by the FCC or fired by our producer, James. I really want to know how many listeners we have. We have at least 15. We know that. Yeah, with all the wonderful callers last week. Thank you once again. That was two weeks two ago. Weeks ago. That was two weeks ago. Ma- science is not my strong suit. That's math. It's literally just counting. Oh. 
Are you bad at I, counting? I don't speak Spanish. Maybe you should listen to the count. Donde? One, yes. ah, ah, ah. Two, ah, ah, ah. Three, ah, uh, ah. Uh, Three Fs I do not give. Oh. Parker. I'm not allowed to say the full word on yeah, the radio. Thank you for not saying the full word. What? This word? Nope. I can meet Parker. myself. Yeah, but stop because you're... Seth, I think we're breaking up. Parker, you're not working. I know, because I don't like my job. Anyways, um, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next question. Sounds delightful. Mm, you sound delightful. Don't ever objectify me like that again. I'm really good at objectifying you, Parker. I do it in my sleep all the time. Oh, Lord. Why do you Why do you just think so much about me just alone with my thoughts in my hand? I mean, there's not reasons not to. I mean, have you... That like, was a double to, negative. I that was, doesn't work in English. You're going... You look fab, bae. Oh, Lord. And you are amazing, and there's no reason that I shouldn't think about you when my room is dark and you have f- four roommates they you don't think of them they, no they're weird <sighs> lord parker someday i'm ready for our next question i think i am too this got this got really strangely personal yeah emotions the next question could a nazi style nationalist movement ever take off in australia or uh, or will we fall to politically correct leftism Wow, that is a very stupid question. I not I don't feel like I'm qualified to answer any question about Australian politics. Why did I even put this on here? I I mean, we could talk, I have another uh, idea that we could transition this into another question because apparently we have a listener that's emailing us live. Okay. Um this comes from Stephen Price and I guess um well, the first part is um tits question. Um I mean, I mean we don't have him, but I wouldn't say no. Yeah. Yeah, same. Like, like, hopefully I do not develop them in the near future because I am trying to I like being a weight. cisgender male. Yeah, being and a dude is so awesome. I mean... No, it, it's not awesome. For it's those females for out there, for those females out there, you are missing out by not having a wee-wee, a cherry limeade. <laughs> that, that's a callback to our last I th- episode. I thought cherry limeade was the action. No, nah, if you don't have, if you do not have a P-E-N-I-S, you are just thoroughly missing out on the perks of having a PE and IS. Like being able to pee outside? Oh, yes. That's, that's, like the that's best. so amazing. And also, like, society is just built for you. Also, urinals. You do yes. not understand how oh. amazing urinals are. Except for those, like, trough urinals. Oh, those are the, those most are the worst. Awkward. Like, sporting events are, like, the hardest thing ever. Like, just, they're just grungy and awkward and, yeah. Yeah, and those are the, usually the times where you see females peeing outside. Yeah, those two. But the question is, who are you voting for and why? That's a very personal question. Why are you calling into a radio He's station? He's not. He emailed us. That's even worse. But Stephen, thank you for listening. Do you know who Stephen is? No, who's Stephen? I don't know, but he's emailing us. I only know Stephen DJ Brunsonburner, who probably isn't listening to this. But if he is, shout out to DJ Brunsonburner, James Copeland's former better half. Well, Stephen, thank you for emailing us. I'll answer this question. Stephen Price? Yeah, Stephen is it, Price. Isn't that like a toy company? I mean, it could or, be. No, that's Fisher Price. Yeah, Fisher Price, Stephen Price. They might be related. So who are you voting for if you're I, so comfortable I, asking me I this question? I already voted, and I um, voted for Hillary. Uh, like, more local-wise. Oh, local-wise? I don't remember. You don't remember who you voted for I for congressman or woman? It, I had it written down. I don't remember off the top of my head. I was more worried about the presidential election. Why? They don't directly uh, affect you. Yeah. You know no. who directly affects you? Your you know, yeah, but local Trump, judges. Trump. Trump would d- definitely like start the Hunger Games. Okay, you're overestimating the power that the president has in the United States. I'm not the pres- overestimating the power of Trump. The pre- presidency is more like a figurehead. Like They don't actually do anything. Oh, I know. If anything has been I, showed by the Obama administration, it is that he doesn't really do anything. Congress and Senate make the rules. Okay, but still, I'm like not letting Trump near nuclear codes. That's the one I was most worried about. Of course. Having a commander-in-chief and all that jazz... Not like we have safety measures in place. I don't know. Trump's President's already word is law. That's in the Constitution, right? Yeah, something like that. I think you can also find it in first opinions. First opinions? Mm-hmm. It's biblical, too. Of course it is. Uh, is yeah. there really a book in the Bible called Opinions? Yeah. Yeah. It's right there after after Revelations. 
No, I think he, Revelations is the last one. Revelation, it's singular. There's only one? Yeah, John wow. had one revelation. I feel kind of cheated. Yeah, it's not Revelations. PSA. This has been a PSA. For the by... last book of the Bible. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> revelation, not Revelations. Thank you, Alicia Paddock. Whoever that is. She called in last... Well, no, her kids called in last a couple weeks ago. Did I yell at them? Yeah, you said very inappropriate things, and I was like, Parker. It's like it's after eight. Man, this is also a shout out to after eight. The delicious, delicious people. Who make the world go round. Very uh, good. Very good. So we have six minutes left on the air. So this comes to our final question. Seth, what did we learn today? Oh, man, Parker, I think we learned a lot. Did um, we? I don't remember much of it. Okay, well, I good think I have a sticky note. Yeah, I'll start. So Parker calls his right hand Jill. Yeah, because, you know, you see the J, the I, the L, L. Yeah, yeah I, get, I get why you do it. I'm just I'm like, just explaining it to the people at home. It, I, look, put out your right hand. There's a J there, there's an I there, there's an L there, there's an L there. Jill. Okay, and Parker, what did you learn? I learned that Parker is a little bit vulgar at Rocky Horror, and Seth can't quite deal with the fact of making fun of crippled people. What did you learn today? I also learned that we have a science corner. We do. It's it's that one right there. Yep. I, yeah, I see it now. Can we get a sign for it? I Hopefully. Let's ask our producer, James, James in the near James, future. James, James, can we have a designated science corner? Because I feel like that's going to be a recurring segment here. Yeah. Especially with karaoke. Yeah, if we do karaoke more. Which brings me to my um, my third one. Uh, well, I need to do my yeah, second one. Yeah, you should do your second one. We learned today that Parker has an 18-foot-long scarf, and we just casually glossed over that. There was no questions, no follow-up. No, you just accepted that Parker has an 18-foot-long scarf there, laying there around There are some sometimes. things I don't want to question because I know that you're weird enough. Fair enough. What else did you learn today? So I also learned that um, Seth and Parker, while they may suck at karaoke, can still have fun doing it. Yes, very much so. And what was the last thing you learned, Parker? The final thing we learned today was that plastic knives can be strong, but then they wouldn't be cheap. Yep, exactly. Do you have any um, final thoughts for uh, our listeners, Parker? Yes, I do. Scrumptious lessons. <clears throat> That was a weird noise. Uh, uh. Just just ponder this. Just ponder this. Think about a Native American wearing a Make America Great Again shirt. Hmm. Just, just ponder that. For the next week? For the next week. So, okay. Seth, would you like to take us out? I will. Ladies and germs, thank you for joining us this week. And we hope that you will join us next week when we listen to more Billy Joel music, continue to give bad advice, make more inappropriate jokes, and answer the age-old question, do blind people feel love at first sight? In the meantime, send an email to sethandparker at gmail.com with any questions you might like us to discuss or catch up on other shows at soundcloud.com slash with Seth and Parker. Really? Like, what's the other version of ladies and germs? Why are we insulting the gentleman? Um, uh, I can't think of any words I can say on the radio. <laughs> well, thank you very much and have a wonderful rest of your night.